Harry Potter is Quidditch's most popular player of all time. He's also its most overrated. Underneath the career everyone saw with iconic moments and memories, Harry's image as a great player was actually completely fake. He's a fraud who is not nearly as good at his sport as you might remember. So, what happened? Harry Potter, the boy who lived, was at one point the most hyped prospect in all of Quidditch. Showing off ridiculous talent with a broomstick, he was immediately heavily recruited to play for his house Quidditch team, with Gryffindor making him the youngest seeker to play the game in over a hundred years. That first game he played changed how everyone viewed Harry as a player. But before we do that, you need to understand why the Hogwarts world was all over Harry Potter even before he first played Quidditch. Harry Potter was the hottest prospect of his time, coming into the game with a firestorm of hype. He was recruited to play Quidditch before he even knew what Quidditch was. This was a boy who came from being raised as a muggle, which I think is part of why we as a Quidditch community romanticize his career so much. Everyone loves a good underdog story. You wouldn't even care about him if he was raised on wizard principles as a child. It's just the fact that he was a muggle and a survivor of the Dark Lord in his prime. Everyone was locked in to every move this kid was making, in sports and in life. So being raised a muggle, the whole Quidditch thing as a concept was foreign to him. Keep that in mind throughout this story. But being a young, talented broomsman and Gryffindor needing a seeker, they did the nearly unprecedented and brought in young Harry Potter to join the squad. Now I have to remind you all, a seeker in Quidditch exists for a totally separate purpose than the rest of the team. While the real Quidditch is happening, you know, your quaffles and your bludgers and goal scoring. A seeker is just meant to find this one little teeny tiny flying golden snitch in the air that catching it means you win the whole game. Which is really stupid, because why does this stuff just not matter unless the snitch is caught? It's like if during a basketball game there was, you know, basketball going on and each team has a guy running around the crowd doing a scavenger hunt. And the basketball being played doesn't decide who wins the game scavenger hunt guy does. Harry fills that role, which means he just has to kind of float aimlessly for the whole game, waiting to catch the snitch. Let's watch the tape. As the real players for Gryffindor are getting lit up by Slytherin, all Harry can do is get a little mad. Damn, you guys are really losing, huh? It's like if a kicker is mad during a football game that the defense is getting torched. Only, Harry actually can do something about it. Like, go find the snitch then if you're upset. Make an impact. You don't have to be this powerless. Go do your job, man. What's the problem? Let's watch Harry try to fly around on his broom to help the team win. Oh. Uh... Yeah, maybe Gryffindor's better off without him. Looks like his broom is cursed or something, but no, he's just that bad today. But then, the seemingly impossible happened if you went just off what Harry was showing the crowd in that game to that point. He did, in fact, catch the snitch in his first game to win it for Gryffindor in the most memorable moment of his whole career. He caught it, though, with his mouth. This takes no skill. My man literally fell face first into success, lucking out for a win for the team. This doesn't take talent. He tried to catch it normally by standing on the broom and putting his hands out, but he wasn't good enough to do that. I would say he looks like his arms are jelly out there, but that wouldn't happen to him for another year. Stop making this dude to be such a great seeker just because he almost swallowed the golden snitch whole. That probably would have killed him. So he's in fact closer to ravaging his stomach, possibly dying from the consequences, than making a great Quidditch play. The snitch he caught in his first Quidditch match at Hogwarts, rewards of perseverance and skill. Shut the up! You know who's a great Quidditch player? Victor Crumb. He played in the Quidditch World Cup. Harry, this great, beloved Quidditch player, never did that. In fact, he played only eight more games of Quidditch for the rest of his career. I get it. 
He almost died during a game year three. But if DeMar Hamlin made it back and played again, why couldn't Harry get back on the grind for the next three years of his career? No wonder everyone just remembers that oral snitch catch lucky moment. Harry barely even showed up to the Quidditch pitch again after that. Harry's page on the wiki has 102 mentions of Quidditch, that's over 10 times higher than the amount of games he played in his career. Nine games of Quidditch in six seasons. The boy who lived, more like the boy who load managed. He averaged 1.5 games played per season. UFC fighters compete more often than their sport than Harry did in his. Each season, he played in just short of as many games as Aaron Rodgers did for the 2023 Jets. This guy is the 2020's Udonis Haslam of Quidditch, and you guys all made him out to be this kind of legend of the sport. You know what Mo Vaughn, the former MVP of baseball, once told me to my face? The key to any good team and any good player is availability. What this means is that the best thing you can do for your team is be present. Harry wasn't. He was too busy suffering off-the-field injuries, fighting for the wizarding world's freedom, whatever that means. What a joke. And worst of all, redshirting his senior year. Who takes off for personal growth and development in their final season? He made it very clear that he did not have that three-headed dog in him, and he was not driven by the game. In fact, he missed the final in the last year of his career in detention. Can you believe that nonsense? Who does that? Getting detention when he knows the Quidditch final is coming up. Harry Potter was irresponsible, reckless, erratic, and more serious than any of those things, afraid of the big game. He let down his teammates. He wasn't there for them, especially not in the clutch. Soft. Overrated. Pretty boy. A b This boy is an off-the-field problem. He's a distraction to his teammates. I mean, he's literally running an underground class cult during school. And you want this guy to go down as a legend of Quidditch? It's probably a good thing for all the other Quidditch students this guy barely played. Look at how he could have gotten hundreds of people killed leading a bludger into the crowd because he didn't have the finesse to avoid it on the field. Sure, he caught the snitch to win this game, but he was going up against the most unqualified nepotism baby in Quidditch history. Hagrid's brother could have defeated Draco Mickey Mouse Malfoy in that chase. I do also have to tell you that he was riding with the Nimbus 2000 for his whole career, which, reminder, his career wasn't that long, both in games played and taking his senior season completely off. At the time of Harry picking it up, he had the best broom available in Quidditch. Like, yeah, of course he was able to catch a snitch or two in his career. They basically gave him the magicalist broom on the market. Compared to the slowpokes at Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw, they might as well have given him an Iron Man suit to play with. Harry Potter is not only a luck merchant, but a broom merchant as well. You know who was a good Quidditch player? Better than Harry, in fact? His wife! Ginny Weasley. Did you know that she wound up becoming a pro Quidditch player after Hogwarts? That's right. There are pro Quidditch players and a whole international World Cup, which Victor Crumb was good enough for that too. Just because you played a couple good games at the Hogwarts level doesn't make you this titan of the sport. There are levels so much higher than the one Harry barely even showed up for. I mean, would you deserve a passing grade in a class if you only showed up like 1.5 times a year? Harry didn't go pro. He definitely wasn't good enough to do that. Ginny was at Harry's position. It's not like he was worthy of it either with all of his off the field issues. What team would have taken a chance on a guy who consistently had a track record of problems in his career, both academically and athletically? Look at this doofus, he can't even cast Wingardium Leviosa. You think he's anything in the classroom? He didn't even care enough to go professional in Quidditch, of course. He was doing so many extracurriculars that his heart just wasn't in the game. And for someone you all want to be a legend, 
That's pathetic. So you know how we as a society put Harry Potter on this complete undeserved pedestal as one of the best Quidditch players to ever live? What we should be doing is giving his wife that kind of credit. She climbed so much higher in Quidditch than he did. If Harry's this big Quidditch icon, what does that make his wife? It's basic math. If he never made it pro and is a legend, what does that make professional athlete Ginny Weasley? Thought so. Anyways, yeah, respect Ginny as the Quidditch champion of the family. Not Harry, and definitely not her stupid brother and one game wonder Ron Weasley. Don't even get me started on him and his completely fraudulent performance as a keeper. He had to have been using liquid luck. So, uh, yeah, Harry Potter sucks. That's all.